Hey there, Internet. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, let's talk about superstition. It can hold us back from trusting those we deem outsiders. Or it can protect us from very real dangers. After all, the superstition about not walking under ladders stems from the very sensible belief that you might just get something dropped on your head. But in today's subject, superstition may be closer to reality than we think. Because today's subject is the medieval adventure, Season of the Witch. Released in 2011, Season of the Witch is the tale of two medieval ex-crusaders who return to their homeland to discover it blighted by the plague. And when they meet the supposed culprit, they're tasked with taking her to a monastery to help lift her curse. Receiving decidedly negative reviews, is this movie a diamond in the rough, or a steaming pile of black death? There's only one way to find out, so ride with me my friends as we brave the magic and madness of the mythical Middle Ages in Season of the Witch. I present you our heroes, Bayman and Felzen, crusaders of the Christian era 14th century. Until they are turned upon women and children. Oh, nasty. And their consciences pull them homeward. But a triumphant homecoming this is not, as the Black Death ravages across this land. Our heroes look to make for friendlier climes, and stop at a nearby town. But there is a price to pay for desertion. Thus do our heroes find themselves locked up, as we meet our heroine. And so a deal is made that she's given a fair trial. A guide recruited and our heroes take up the task of transporting an alleged witch to a monastery for cleansing. And en route we meet Kai, an aspirant. That night our band makes camp and our Witch looks to escape, and we'll skip the stabbing of the priest de Belzac's hand. After all, one can only have so many levels of ooh nasty. Tracking her to a nearby village, she retaliates with shadows and lies. Mila. And yet, in her defence, our heroine claims that she fears him. But which him? Ah, my friends, we'll get to that. Nevertheless, the band are lighter one soul the next morning. The journey to the monastery includes a rickety bridge, which I'm sure only exists to pad out this movie to a respectable length, and a forest in the fog, where Hagamar, the guide, proposes a simple solution. We kill the here and now be done with it. But when a pack of wolves appear, despite the band's best efforts, he too meets his end. And the moral of this scene? Don't threaten to kill your prisoner in cold blood. Doubly so when your prisoner's a witch. It's just not right. All of which proves too much for Bayman as he takes Hagamar's simple solution. Felsen, however, and of all people, points out their destination. And so our remaining band reach the Severac Monastery. Yet all too late, as the plague has reached even this far. Now then, as a side note, bubonic plague in the modern era can be cured with a simple dose of antibiotics. Smallpox, on the other hand, is less susceptible to early treatment. So, at the risk of sounding political, we advise you to get vaccinated against smallpox if you haven't been already. Their only hope lies in the Key of Solomon, 
a book of holy prayers to defeat evil. But this is more than a witch, and less, as de Belzac, the priest, chants an exorcism. Thus do we glimpse the beast's true form, and press onward to a final battle. Hmm. Odd how Latin is the language of a Middle Eastern god, isn't it? But this demon will not fall easily, and it will cost three more lives, as de Belzac, Felsen, and Bayman will fall, before this demon is finally defeated by the word of God, no less. And our heroine is ejected unscathed and nude. Cleanest exorcism I've ever seen, and I've seen a few. And so our movie ends as we learn our hapless heroine's name. My name is Anna. So that was Season of the Witch. And it's not a bad movie. But I can't put this one into the house of love. This movie is dark. Visually, if not in tone, large portions are shot in near darkness. Though I suppose this is necessary, as light in the Middle Ages was in short supply. But it does hamstring a lot of the visual element, while doing relatively little for the mood. And even running as it does at a slender 91 minutes, this movie is not brisk. The flow is like treacle, as scene drips into scene, and all caked in medieval grime, and the remains of the fallen. The plot itself is rather thin, the basic medieval road movie, though with the religious twist and the surprise ending. And there wouldn't even be very much to say about this forgettable movie, but for the standout performances of Nicolas Cage and Ron Perlman. Between these two actors, they carry this movie. Of course, that's mostly because, for at least the first half hour, they get almost every second of screen time, save for a brief introduction. For them alone, this movie is saved from bargain bin territory. The tone of this movie, while necessarily grim, is more hopeful in its ending. Overall then, my sense of Season of the Witch is that it harkens back to the fantasy movies of the 80s, only slightly darker and grimier if no less witty. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you better days and better movies. So long, folks! <laughs>